Hey folks, Vince Bruzio here from Previews World and we're talking to somebody that you probably recognize from television. If you watch History Channel, you've got shows like Decoded, Lost History. He's also a New York Times bestselling author, also does children's books. As a matter of fact, that's why we're here talking to him today here in Carroll County, Westminster, where he's going to be talking about his new book, I Am Martin Luther King Jr. But he also has a history in comic books, and that's why we were able to play in this particular sandbox today. Mr. Brad Melcher, sir, thank you so much for talking to us. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. <laughs> now, you're here um, basically to talk about your children's book that just came out this past week, but you've got a history in comic books, long history in comic books, and to the point where I think people who may be watching this video for the first time, if we can do a PSA announcement for them, because we have new people coming to Previous World all the time, if maybe you could give us just a little bit of a you know backdrop as to the kind of work you did for DC Comics. Yeah, so uh, listen, first of all, let me tell you why I'm excited. Because I do all these interviews, but like, this is previews, <laughs> right? I mean, any nerd, I grew up with previews, like looking through previews and being like, when you couldn't afford comics, you like, you went through and you picked down this thing. And I, I still love that there's a catalog that it exists. So previews is just, it warms a place in my heart. Um, I did a comic book called Green Arrow because this uh, small independent uh, guy, very small, um, named Kevin Smith, uh, took on the comic world by storm. Never heard of him. And, and you know, one of the nicest <laughs> guys around. And Kevin was just a sweetheart and was on Green Arrow. And they needed someone to follow him up. And they said, you know what, uh, Brad, this is our number one hero book. If you take it over, everyone's gonna be like, why are they giving it to a novelist? So you either fail on a big stage or succeed on a big stage. And I said, I'll take that shot. And so got to do Green Arrow. Then got asked to do a little book called Identity Crisis, and then did one called uh, another small little book called Justice League of America. And that was my, my nerd dream come true. Uh, I, my whole life I waited to, to write that book. And um, that was really, the re and the funny part is, is that's kind of where people will say I know you from comics, but anyone who reads my novels, the reason I got those jobs was because for ever since I wrote my very first novel back in 1997, I've been hiding comic book references in all the books. And not easy ones like you know Dick Grayson or something like that. I'm talking about like there were you you gotta you gotta pay attention to catch them all. And no one's caught them all yet. But that's how I really got the job is uh, is people. Bob Shrek finally said, "Hey, you're clearly into this stuff." You, you know, I remember he was the last person in line at a signing for the Millionaires, was a book I did. And he said, "You want to write Green Arrow?" And I said, "I've been waiting my whole life for someone to ask me that. Please don't be playing a joke on me." And he says, "I'm serious." And so I jumped at that chance. <laughs> so. Bottom line, you did your stint. You got an Eisner, by the way, for the JLA books. So congratulations. Yeah, we did get an Eisner. Myself and Gene Ha got an Eisner, which is, which I, you know, for all the writing that I've done and all the thrill, the one award that I keep out in my office, I just don't believe in like kind of making a, a you know, a temple to yourself. The only thing I keep out is that Eisner award. It is one of the proudest things I've ever been a part of. And plus, Samuel Jackson gave it to me. I was saying, Samuel Jackson gave right? me more. I mean, Sam, my wife was like, what were, you, what were you doing? I'm like, I got this thing. She's like, and who gave this you again? I'm like, thing. Sam Jackson. Jackson. It was just, God. I mean, I'll never forget. That moment was outrageous to me. You're good at wearing different hats. Let's put on another hat. That hat is particularly why you're here today, which is for kids' books. Um, we have a sister site for Previous World, kidscomics.com. We're always looking out for human interest stories. Um, I can name several organizations we try to pay attention to. Make-A-Wish yeah, Foundation. Fantastic. fantastic organization. They do great work. I speak from the heart there. Um, and so we're constantly looking around to see who's doing what, especially when there's a crossover effect. Now, you're crossing over into kids' books with an artist from the comic industry, Chris, right? Got to talk about Eliopoulos. Let's talk about him. So <laughs> Let's talk about Chris. I mean, first of all, one of the nicest people in the world. Chris Eliopoulos and I do these books, uh, the I Am series. And we started with I Am Amelia Earhart and I Am Abraham Lincoln. And we met because Chris is as big a history nerd as I am. And I just loved his work, always loved his work. And, and you know, what is great about Chris's style is that he, it's filled with heart. It's just filled, brimming with, with heart. And people will say it has a Calvin Hobbes feel or a Peanuts feel, and it has both of those because he loves that just as much as you know he loves any kind of good artwork. But Chris can kind of like really pull your heartstrings and make you feel that. And that's why kids are taken to the book. So I owe him everything. I'm a fan of his even before I'm a friend of his. And the idea that I get to work with one of the people who I love and get to bring you know, Albert Einstein or Rosa Parks or I Am Martin Luther King to kids is, again, just a humbling, humbling moment. I Am Martin Luther King Jr. just came out 
And it's basically moving the needle on terms of uh, ordinary people can change the world, right? That seems to be like your running theme for this for this series of uh, books that you're coming out with. Yeah, you know, when this series started, because I was tired of my own kids looking at reality TV show stars and loudmouth athletes and thinking that that's a hero. And I tell my kids all the time, that's being famous. And being famous is very different than being a hero. Absolutely. So we started with I'm Amelia Earhart. We started with I'm Abraham Lincoln. And the goal is to add to that. So I am Albert Einstein, I am Ro Rosa Parks, Jackie Robinson, um, we did Lucille Ball, Helen Keller, and now we're doing I am Martin Luther King Jr. And what we always do in the books is we don't just tell you the moment when they're famous, we show you them when they're kids. So you see Dr. King when he's six years old and a little white boy who was one of his best friends says to him, I can't play with you anymore. My dad said we can't play together. And he says, what do you mean? And he says, I don't understand, aren't we friends? And, and his parents explained to him, young Dr. King, six years old, says it's because you're black and he's white. Right. And he's so mad that day. And he says later, um, he wants to hate that boy, he wants to hate that dad. And his parents tell him this, Vince. They tell him, you know what? Show him more love instead. That the world is better off with more love in it than more hate in it. And you know what? I want my daughter to learn that lesson. I want my sons to learn that lesson. And that's why we do these books, so we can share these lessons with kids around the country. And that, to me, is the best kind of comic we can be putting out. Well, it sounds like you're moving in the right direction, sir, because you're, you're trying to make change. And you're, uh, I got to say also that I'm very, very appreciative of how you've said, especially when you were at San Diego, how um, you encourage people to be the first to clap. Yeah. And that's what uh, I, I see these books doing. You're encouraging people to emulate historical figures that really move the needle rather than dance in the end zone. So thank you so much for everything no, that you're I doing. No, I appreciate it. No, the, listen, the books are fantastic. Are, these are not the stories of famous people. Right. These are what we're all capable of in our very best days. And to me, if you can encourage a kid and be the first to clap for them, it'll pay us back forever. Words of wisdom there from Mr. Brad Meltzer. You can find his books in comic shops on bradmeltzer.com. Wherever you can find books, make sure you pick one up. For those of you that are watching this in Previous World, you know how this ends. Keep the faith, keep reading comics. And it's why I believe in that first hero we talked about today, Superman. To me, the most important story is not Superman. The most important part of the story is Clark Kent. And you want to know why? Because we're all Clark Kent. We all know what it's like to be boring and ordinary and wish we'd do something incredibly beyond ourselves. And here's the real news, we all can. Again, I want you to think of that teacher in your life that you really like, of that person who gave you your first real job, that person who first took a chance and you got them in your head. I want you to thank them. That's it. That's all I ask. When you leave here and we're done talking, I want you to thank them. You won't believe what comes from it. A few years ago, Miss Spicer, my teacher, finally did retire. She had lasted 12 more years after I went back to visit her. Just from the thank you, right? 12 more years. That woman changed my life. You better believe I was at that retirement party. Go say thank you. You won't believe what comes from it.